ดรปิยาพลีสขอบคุณดรบูรฟีฟอร์ดูไนส์พรีเซนเทชันและปิยาฟอมเลสินฮอสปิตอลไทยแลนด์ so let me ask you one questions about regarding the the in the growing children so you you have used the repetitive growing as vegetable so so I would like to know what is the like a standard Uh, the the processes for for your uh, or, or reconstruction for for the growing children like, like for say like this t o f e m e r Yeah, this process is in the procedure we usually use. So um, it's very interesting because when you get a big group of ortho first, thank you for your question. And when you get a group of orthopedic oncologists together, you see very big differences, especially in the older ones and the younger ones. I think. Um, some people will do growing prostheses at the distal femur in children five and six years old. Um, that may be a little bit young, and I don't know whether multiple surgeries is going to be the right answer. I use both the Stanmore as well as the right medical r e p i f a s i s I think they both have advantages and disadvantages. The Stanmore requires more of a bone resection. So I've stayed away from that at times, and I've even needed to make a custom implant sometimes. But I do like um, sometimes marrying the r e p i f a s i s with the biomet, so it's a non-cemented. Or in children, I'll use a non-cemented stem, knowing that over time the bone doesn't just grow long; it grows this way, and it'll end up being revised. Thank you. Doctor, p l e s e p o n I have uh, one question. Uh, you talk about the uh, functional outcome that I have uh, many method, many instrument to measure the functional outcome. In your opinion, what what is the best method to uh, evaluate the uh, functional outcome? Yeah. You 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 prefer to combine MSTS test score or PROM or In in our area, we 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 develop the EA EA mock, uh, like the like the is is same the MSTA score also. So what what is your opinion? Yeah. So I also a very good question, and thank you for asking. Um, I'll give you an honest answer. I use MSTS because it's quick and it's simple. I don't know that it's the best, and I think some of it is more how you ask the question. Than what question you ask, and that's why I mentioned. You know, I leave the room, and I tell the patients I'm not going to look at it. I don't want to see the result. <laughs> It's just there because I do think patients really like most of us, <laughs> and they want us to feel good about ourselves. Nice. So they give us better scores than we deserve. <laughs> Thank you. Usually, sometimes they complain at your nurses in front of your room. I wait for a long time, and then they see you. Oh yeah, my God, yeah. doctor! No, everything went well. Yeah, like that. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. I agree. In front of doctor, they say, oh, "Good, good." <laughs> yeah. I do it over and over, doctor. It's like that. Okay. Uh, Professor v i r a c h a i please. Yes, I saw you, and you play ping pong. Oh This yeah. Morning. He was better. Yeah. Um, I agree with you that you say that functional. Assessment function is it doesn't mean quality of life because the quality of life that we are using now is a generally quality of life. And when we saw patient with uh, children with tumor and the adult with tumor, quality of life different. Yeah. And you use a generally quality of life is maybe is not appropriate for specific. Children and adult. It's my question: Is do we need a specific quality of life assessment for the children and for the adult? Should be separate. This is my question. Uh, so it, it is a good question. They, one of the studies I talked about was only in pediatric patients, but they used the same assessment. But I think it also depends on. When you ask the question from the time of the surgery, and how old the person is, so someone who's maybe eight or nine years old, they may not have the same ability to adapt as someone yeah. who's 15, 16 years old. Right. And kids who are eight and nine years old might point, they might say things, 
whereas kids who are 15 and 16 years old might be less inclined to point. So I, I don't have a good answer. I think what, what, what I got out of all of this is that most of our patients do pretty well and that we, you know, we should do a quality of life assessment for the surgeon to see whether we think it's a failure to do an amputation. And do we sometimes push a little too far when maybe an amputation's the better operation for a patient? I know growing up, I thought to do an amputation was a failure. You know, and I would really not want to do an amputation, you know. So when I would talk to patients, I would say, anyone can do an amputation. I really don't want to do an amputation, but I think this is what you need. Okay. Thank you. Great question, though. Uh, 